all right y'all we are back for the finale we have been going through esther um the book of esther and it was amazing it starts out with this young girl well let me roll it back a little bit further it starts out with a queen who did not come to her king she got done away with then we run into esther um in the beginning her ethnic background is unknown because she's not really supposed to be among certain people because of her ethnicity um and then she is favored among the king and ends up being his new queen in place of queen vashti who was thrown out right and then there was this whole series of issues while she was in the kingdom with her legal guardian mordecai and another one of the king's officials Haman. Haman basically grew a hatred for mordecai and plotted this whole edict of hanging mordecai on a gallow and killing all of his people in his ethnicity then the turnaround was great Esther gained favor in the sight of the king. The king basically honored Mordecai shortly before hanging Haman on the gallow. And then a new edict was put in to where the Jews were protected and that they had the ability to annihilate and destroy all of those who hated them. And basically, long story short, Haman's 10 sons, they also ended up on the gallows. Uh, Haman's estate ended up with esther and mordecai well mordecai was put in charge but the estate was esther's so it was a really complete story of turnaround it really was a story of turnaround there was courage there was bravery um so many great and valiant adjectives that i could use but you would have to really watch all of the chapters on this to understand where i'm coming from and honestly as i recommend and i should really be saying this in every video do not just take my word for it get in your word read you may see something that i didn't mention or i didn't emphasize on or something else may speak to you the second time around reading it maybe you may find a different story out of reading it but i always want to encourage everyone to read the word for yourself don't just take the preacher's word for it don't just take the pastor's word for it you get in the word and read for yourself and do your own studies all right so let's go ahead and finish up with chapter 10 all right let's get into the finale chapter 10 an epilogue on mordecai King Ahasuerus imposed a tax throughout the land, even to the farthest shores. All of his powerful and magnificent accomplishments and the detailed account of Mordecai's great rank with which the king had honored him, have they not been written in the book of the historical events of the kings of Media and Persia? Mordecai the Jew was second only to King Ahasuerus. He was famous among the Jews and highly esteemed by many of his relatives. He continued to pursue prosperity for his people and to speak for the well-being of all his descendants. This is so beautiful. What once turned out into a really scary story, Mordecai rose to the top and he became a pillar in his community. And he was able to do so much for his people, which was pursuing prosperity for them and making sure that the well-being of their ethnicity and their culture was protected. So, I mean, there's so many avenues that you can go in with the book of Esther. So many avenues. I mean, so many. But you would really have to just read and get your own take on it. Also, again, like I recommend when you're reading the word of God, it's always good to get down and pray and say, Lord, what do you want me to take from this word? What do you want me to understand from this word that I'm reading? So important. Let's take it back with a little ancient history. Ahasuerus had fought a war with Greece, costly in resources and lives, and he lost in 479 BC. Mordecai, as second only to King Ahasuerus, probably had a role to play in implementing attacks, giving him a unique place in Jewish history. And Joseph in Egypt, which is in Genesis 41 verse 43, and making him an example of how God raised up heroic leaders to the highest positions, even in pagan courts, in order to deliver his people. Mordecai achieved great honor because he sought prosperity for his people, and he also spoke out courageously for the well-being, which is peace absence of war or completeness, wholeness, health, harmony, prosperity, security, and fulfillment of all his descendants. The latter characteristic was far more rare than the former. 
The author seems to emphasize that well-being and good relationships are most important in a peaceful and safe existence. And here's a little excerpt that was written in my CSB Bible. Someone has noted that a veil does not necessarily cover to keep out, but rather may invite the viewer to look through and see what is behind. The book of Esther, if likened to a veil, invites its readers to peer through and see the faithful providence excuse me, that God has assigned to the care of his people throughout the generations. Wow. Like, this was a really great chapter. And I've read the book of Esther several times, but a lot of these details I did not realize the first time. Um, God is so great. God is so good. <laughs> if you really look at what happened from the beginning until now, you'll understand what I'm saying. I'm not going to cover everything because if I cover everything, then you're not going to go back and watch the other videos. But I suggest watching chapters 1 through 9 before you watch this because this part, again, will not make sense. So it's best to start from the beginning. But for all of you who have stayed along, who have read the word with me, who have come, who have tuned in, who are watching... Thank you so much for watching. I'm still encouraging you to go back, read the chapter on your own, and ask the Lord for whatever interpretation or whatever message he has from you for that story. But you never know when you're for such a time as this moment may come. And this story is a great gateway to understanding how to navigate through situations as such. God bless you, everyone. And thank you so much for tuning in for Who is Queen Esther in the Bible. Bye, guys.